Hi guys, um, welcome back to my channel. I always say um in the intro, I'm trying to not do that, but it's a bad habit. I'll try to stop doing that. Um, anyway, today I am going to, um, just go through my birth plan and also kind of explain what a birth plan is, why I chose to have one, and, um, you know, just all of that. Um, information. If you'd like more information on birth plans, I'm going to link a video by Bridget Taylor, who is a doula here on YouTube, down below, because um, I think her video is really good. But um, I'm going to try and explain it as a doula and also future birthing person um, as best that I can. Excuse me, as well. So, a birth plan. What is a birth plan? A birth plan is basically a piece of paper. Um, that you bring with you, like, traditionally, a, a birth plan is a piece of paper that you bring with you to your birthplace, whether it be the ho hospital or a birth center, um, and I guess you could also write one if you were having a home birth, just in case. Um, so it's just a, a piece of paper with, um, a t all your information of, like, your goals for your labor and delivery um and then sometimes they can kind of go into also if plans change this is what I'd like so for example if you're planning a home birth um you can write perhaps um what you would like to happen if you needed to transfer to the hospital um, for an emergency or for a non-emergency, um, if you're planning a natural vaginal birth uh, in the hospital, you could write, you know, um, what you'd like to happen if you needed to get an epidural or needed to have a cesarean section. So um, it's just kind of a plan of what your goals and your, like, important things for your labor and delivery that you would like your birth team to know. Um, and so there's some stigma in the medical world and in the birth world about birth plans that they're kind of like your birth is never going to go exactly to plan, which I think is untrue. I think um, some people can have the birth that they have always wanted. Obviously, like things change and and I think, um, yeah, so I think writing a birth plan can be really a good option um, for anyone. Sorry guys, um, I had to take a little break because my husband came home for lunch. Um, but anyway, let's get back into it. Let me log back into my computer really quick. Um, so, I think a birth plan can be a great option for, um, uh, any type of birth. And I would recommend that you do it just to even have your goals in mind. I think the best way to go about a birth plan is to create it so you can um, A, know what your options are. I think it's a great tool for um, doing your own research, being informed, knowing what options you have, um, where you are, wherever you're birthing. And then um, also so that you have an idea at the very least of what you want out of your birth and what your ideal birth experience is. Um, and so with that being said, a birth plan might not be ever for everyone, um, but I think it's a great tool, especially um, for your first time around to just know your options and like, um, yeah, just have an idea of what you want. Um, so there, so you can look online and well, first of all, you could create your own birth plan. Um, you don't have to use a template or a tool if you feel comfortable doing so. Let me tuck my bun in a little bit better. Um, if you feel comfortable making your own birth plan, that's great. Uh, but I'm going to... What are you doing? Can you lay down? I'm going to share um, two options for birth plan templates that I would, that I um, have in front of me. So one of them that I use to kind of create my birth plan is the Earth Mama 
um, birth plan. It's a little template on their website. I'll link it down below, but basically you just go to the Earth Mama website and there's a thing on their, like, menu, on their drop-down menu that says birth plan. You just click on that. And then the other one is the bump dot com their little birth plan checklist um they're kind of similar and then i will go over my birth plan but before i do that i'm going to talk about well actually i'm gonna no let's go through these first okay so the earth mama one starts out with um your personal information so your email i think this so they can email you a copy of the finished thing so the nice thing about the earth mama one that's different than the bump is you can actually fill it out and they will um, send you a downloadable copy of your birth plan so that you can have it printed out and it's already done. It's just a checklist so you just check what you want and they make it for you. Um, the bump one I don't think is that way. Um, it is just a checklist for you to kind of write your own and use as a reference. Oh no, it does have a downloadable PDF. Okay, so. The, um, the Bump one has a checklist on their website, but then they also have a PDF that you can download. Um, the thing is, is the, the difference is the Earth Mama one, um, is personal, personalizable, person, you can customize it basically. They will make a customized one for you based on what you click on, and the bump one, um, you just print it and fill it out. So everything is on there still. So now I'm going to go through my, um, my birth plan that I made with the Earth Mama, um, tool. So I have my name, my husband's name, our email, my due date, our address. Um, I wrote down my two midwives in the doctor's name section and then my birth center in the hospital section. So the reason that we are choosing midwives and a birth center is because, well, when we lived in Washington, our plan was to have a home birth. So we had a home birth midwife. We were going to have rented a birth pool and have our baby at our house. Um, but when we moved down here, we discovered that there aren't really very many home birth midwives, and if they are, they're not really certified, and um, that's just kind of sketchy. So um, we did a lot of research into our options and found two birth centers, one in a hospital and one freestanding nearby, and we ended up choosing the further away option um, but it is a freestanding birth center, so it's not affiliated with any hospital, it's not in a hospital, um, and they have amazing, amazing reputation, and so we really, really like it there. Um, my mom had four home births, two hospital births, and four home births. Um, I was at all four of my younger siblings' home births, and that's really just my personal experience with labor and delivery and what I feel comfortable with. Um, and I am just pretty natural and like I attended doula training when I was 19, um, which um, doulas are not like specifically for natural births or for any sort of birth. Um, but that's just where I lean medically, like what I'm comfortable with. So we are choosing to have a home birth, or no, we're choosing to have a hospital birth. Um, I would like to have a home birth in the future if that option ever becomes available to us. Um, but right now our best choice for us is the birth center and we are really, really happy with them. And so um, I might never have a home birth if, I, if we stay in this area and, excuse me, if we stay in this area and continue to have babies um, with the birth center. Um, and yeah, we'll just, we'll see how this first one goes. Um, you never know, birth is unpredictable. And I think as a doula, that's really helpful to know, like going into my first birth experience, as I know like it's unpredictable and things change, um, but that I am also fully capable of having a natural birth. Um, so, before labor begins, so I, before I start this, um, because I'm having a birth center birth, a lot of the things that you might be questioned about in a hospital 
just because of the hospital environment, um, are kind of already standard in a birth center. For example, delayed cord clamping and immediate skin to skin. A lot of those things are becoming really common in hospitals anyhow, but, um, these days, but, um, it would, it really depends on your area and your hospital. So, um, but those things are pretty standard in birth centers with midwives. So, um, I don't feel like I really need a birth plan necessarily for my care providers, but in the event that we need to transfer because my labor is really long, um, or there's an emergency, um, or something changes, again, birth is very unpredictable. Um, it's nice to have, and it's also just nice so that I can write down, you know, I mean, I have pretty well in my head, um, what my ideal birth looks like, but again, it's just a nice tool to have, just to have your goals on a piece of paper and written down and ready to go. So, um, a lot of this thing, these things I am not actually very concerned about with my midwives, um, but I am just writing it to have it written, I guess. Um, and there are actually some things I might add and take away from here um, and edit as time goes on. Um, and that's the nice thing about writing your birth plan too is that you get to do that and you get to pick um, what's on there and what isn't and what you want personally for your own birth and what is going to work best for you. So um, before labor begins, we would like to, I, I am, not willing to go past 42 weeks. Um, I know some people don't worry about like timing their when their baby comes. Um, but first of all, I was tracking my cycle when we got pregnant, so I'm pretty sure of when we conceived, and I don't feel that there is any reason why we would need to go past 42 weeks. I think, like, I don't think our dates are wrong um, when it comes to. Um, how far along I am in our pregnancy, which would be a reason why someone might go past 42 is if they don't know when they conceived. But so, and then on top of that, you just add risks, um, for complications and your placenta aging and things like that that can get dangerous if you go past 42 weeks. So, um, I, I am willing to go up to 42 weeks. So I did say that as long as the baby and I are healthy, I would like to go at least 10 to 14 days over my due date before starting any plans to induce, um, but it's something I'd be willing to discuss um, as we approach that day. Um, I would like to discuss laboring at home as long as possible. We all have a doula with us, um, so we'll labor here as long as we need to. I don't want, I don't really plan on being at the birth center early, um, but we do live an hour away, so gauging that might be a little difficult. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I trust my practitioner will seek out my opinion concerning all of the issues directly affecting my birth before deviating from my, my plan. I know that my midwives are super open and they will discuss um, those things with me if they need to. Um, I would like to go into neighbor labor. I would like to go into labor naturally. I'm actually not against um, naturally augmenting labor, so um, having sex, stimulating your nipples, um, bouncing on birth balls, yada yada yada. There's There are some other things you can do, um, and I would talk to my practitioner, I would talk to my midwives before trying some of the more like intense stuff like any herbal supplements to go into labor or using castor oil. Um, I would definitely talk to them first before doing that, but things like sex and walking and bouncing on the ball, those are things that they're gonna, if you're ready to go into labor and they put you into labor, your, your body was pretty ready to go into labor. Um, my midwives don't really do vaginal exams, like, I think they, I don't think they do one until you show up and you're in labor. And then they don't really, like, check you unless you ask or unless they feel like it's necessary. Um, 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 and then we have a home that we can go to in the event that we arrive at the birth center too early. We have a place we can go just in case we need to. Um, so for induction options, I put breast stimulation, walking herbs, castor oil, and sexual intercourse. 
um, and I will talk to my practitioner about alternatives set to treatments like antibiotics in case I have GBS. Um, but I'm actually not opposed to having uh, antibiotics in the event that I have GBS. Um, so we will see. Um, but I am on a probiotic right now, so hopefully that won't happen. Um, upon arrival at the hospital, I prefer to have my partner with me at all times. That's obviously going to be the case. We also have a doula, so she will be with us as well. Um, we, the, the midwives provide a birth ball. They have birth pools, birth tubs in their rooms. The lights will obviously be dimmed. Um, I'm going to bring a speaker and then also headphones to have with me and we will probably, they don't like, you're not in a hospital gown so you just wear your own clothes while you're in labor. Um, and then my doula and me and Gavin are also going to photograph and film our birth. For pain relief, we're going to have breathing techniques, acupressure, massage. Um, my, my doula and I also talked about some like visual, visualization. Um, I'm going to try and do some like hypnobirthing stuff because I've really enjoyed what I've looked into and listened to so far. And then we'll also use a shower. We're going to be able to walk around and move as much as we want and there's no, um, they're not going to tell me not to make noise. Um, that, and that's the nice thing about midwives. I think though, honestly, even if you're having a natural birth in the hospital, a lot of this stuff is pretty standard even in hospitals now. Um, but I don't know. I haven't had a hospital birth. Um, intermittent monitoring, usually they just do that with the Doppler. Um, I don't want to have a time limit on pushing as long as the baby is not in distress or I'm not in distress. Um, I don't know what position I'm going to want to push in and so I just put squatting, hands and knees or whatever feels right at the time. Um, I would not like to have an episiotomy. Um, I would like to have perineal support. And then also coaching for crowning. I feel like that would be beneficial for me. Usually people don't like to be coached. Well, some people do. Some people respond really well to coaching um, during pushing and like crowning and some people don't. Um, I don't feel like I want to be told when to push just because I'm 10 centimeters. Um, I would like that urge to kind of come when it comes and I'll push when I'm ready to push. But um, I would like to be coached on how to push when she's crowning just so I don't tear. Um, so we're going to have immediate skin to skin. Um, we're going to breastfeed and have delayed cord clamping and then also um, we'll delay the newborn procedures until after we've had a nice bonding period. And I think Gavin will have skin to skin while I deliver the placenta or after I deliver the placenta and maybe if I need to have some repairs done while they're doing that. Um, I wrote down some options for if I have a c-section. I basically clicked everything because um, I would like to have a gentle cesarean if I can. Um, again, delayed cord clamping. Gavin will cut the cord. Gavin would also like to help catch her if he can. Um, so. I wrote that on there as well. Um, I don't want Pitocin unless I am hemorrhaging. Mm. Yes, and Gavin will go with the baby if there's any problems. Um, and we will transfer to the hospital post-delivery if the baby has any problems. Um, and they will, they'll do, they already do all of the newborn procedures, like, at the end of your bed, so they're not going to take the baby anywhere. Um, we're not doing erythromycin, and we are doing vitamin K. Um, uh, immunizations are, we're postponing till later. Um, we're not bathing her, which they already don't do in the birth center unless you ask, I think. Um... Yeah, and then we're exclusively breastfeeding. And then hospital stay will be as short as possible. Um, usually at the birth center it's like six hours to eight hours, but usually not eight hours. So 
yeah so that is my birth plan guys um, again I will link the earth mama and the bump um, birth plans down below and I hope this was pretty good and informative for anyone out there looking to make a birth plan um, I've also seen that visual birth plans are also pretty nice to have and a little less obviously wordy and cluttered um, but I couldn't really find very many visual birth plans um, online that you could customize so um, you could maybe make your own like DIY anyway if you were to make a if you wanted a more visual like picture birth plan um, you could probably make your own but with that being said I am um, making this video very very long so I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.